こにいた人たちは全員熱風で顔が。I saw women who were burned taking refuge, and I saw their faces. Their faces were so swollen, they could not open their eyes, and their skin and clothes were stuck together and hanging from their arms. They were very miserable, and their death, a gruesome sight. On August 6, 1946, among the ruins of Hiroshima, survivors of the world's first nuclear war rallied. They carried signs that read, No more war, and peace begins here. Seared by atomic fire, they were reborn as champions of peace. The next year, Mayor Hamai renamed Hiroshima the City of Peace, saying, August 6th should be remembered for having created an opportunity to establish world peace. These terrifying weapons have brought a revolution in our thoughts. As a result, we find new truths and new paths for starting life anew. Let us ban the horror and crime of war and establish true peace. Across the world, the man instrumental in unleashing this atomic power was troubled by his conscience and a grim vision. J. Robert Oppenheimer saw new weapons evolving that made atomic bombs appear puny. He also saw that a commitment to peace was the answer. In his 1953 security clearance hearing, question, you knew dropping that atomic bomb would kill or injure thousands of civilians, is that correct? Answer, not as many as turned out. Question, how many were killed or injured? Answer, 70,000. Question, did you have moral scruples about that? Answer, terrible ones. Question, would you have supported the dropping of a thermonuclear bomb on Hiroshima? Answer, it would make no sense at all. Question, why? Answer, the target is too small. From 1946, nuclear weapons evolved at an astonishing pace. Inspired physics and inventive engineering brought fantastic weapons into reality. The bomb quickly evolved into a sleek, sophisticated weapon. Now, many times the destructive power of World War II could be released in a single afternoon. We, we were never really afraid of anything, except failing. This was a time of emergency orders, as the United States built a formidable nuclear arsenal to stay the threat of communism. These were the years of the Cold War and deterrence, as Eisenhower defined as to be constantly ready to inflict greater loss upon the enemy than he could reasonably hope to inflict on us. The Soviets called it simply terror. Most of those that were working on these things could not imagine them being used. You could only imagine them being such a threat that nobody would go ahead with such a thing. If you went the other route, your mind can't handle it because it's overwhelming to imagine killing millions of people with weapons of this sort. What worried me then, and has worried me all through the years, is this thing could go either, either way. The atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were absolutely a defining moment of the 20th century, maybe a defining moment in human history. They made it clear in the most brutal way what this new discovery was about. In nanoseconds, the nature of warfare and how nations would relate to each other was forever changed. War had reached its zenith. The following Cold War years were complicated by personalities, ideologies, old fears, and new visions. Unlocking the secrets of the universe would be relatively easy compared to finding the formula for peace.